Good morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and Ian's with me again today and it's going to be a bit of a show of two halves. So I'm going to start by showing you what to do on the computer side, carrying on from yesterday. And then Ian's going to show you cutting and foiling the stickers. Hopefully. Hopefully. So yesterday we designed our stickers and we printed them onto our printable vinyl. Ian, you didn't pop up a link, did you, just yet? So no. we'll, have to, we'll have to do that later. So, smack my Danny. So first of all, hi to Linda. Now everybody else who's commenting, I won't be able to see comments until after I finish this section. So Tracy's moderating until that point. So thank you Tracy and let's get on. Uh, have a go. That one. <laughs> it's okay, Ian's asking me a question. So, we yesterday we did our print with our registration mark and now we're ready to convert that to an FCM ready for our machine. I've popped a USB drive into my port ready to transfer the data to. So let's go through the process. So I'm going to reveal my cut line so that we can then see that because we didn't want that to print and have a black border because otherwise you risk getting that on your sticker when you cut it out. We want to keep our full element but we printed that yesterday so we've got to change what type of layer it is and we're going to change that to draw. Okay. Now what I would say is with that, when you go into your machine you're going to want to pop the film in because it's only going to go round the outside. Next, we know that we don't need to send any of our print layer so we're going to hide that. And finally we have our registration mark which is still set to print because we've printed that onto our vinyl so that we can use that as an alignment tool and we want to make sure that's in our file too. Now given that we are going to be foiling our sentiment rather than drawing it, I'm going to set my registration marks to cut. So that means that we don't have the foil quill going back over our registration mark, um, especially as mine is laser printed. So if you do go back over with your foil quill and there's no foil there, you're going to find that you get a very mucky foil quill. Okay. With that done, I'm going to go to File. I'm going to save the project anyway, just in case it does crash, as we've got that far. <sighs> Don't want to ruin it now. And I'm going to go Export. And I'm going to go down to Scan and Cut. So that it's into that FCM format. I'm going to go to my USB. And you can see I've got two folders that start with A's. Now that means it's a temp one, so what I need to do at some point is actually clear these off. So I'm going to start a new folder and I'm going to say a boiled label. And then we can just call that full and cut label and save. You then want to go to your USB, which is down here, and we want to eject it. So that is the equivalent of safely remove hardware on your PC. And just turn that off. There you go. And over to you, Ian. You let me know and then I can flip okay. back. Okay. That should be right. So let's do hello, shall we? I can go back up to the top. So, hi Carol. Hi Zena. Hi 
Deb. Thank you. Hi, Mum. Hi, Thea. So we nearly went live at 10. <laughs> nearly. Right, so I've just turned on the scanning cut because I thought that would be a good start. Do you want to show the foil? The foil should be on screen. Yep, I was, I was meaning more so the packet, darling. Right, okay. <laughs> so the foil that Nat has chosen for me is um, Spare Binder Glimmer. No, thank you. That's what I've always wanted. I might have There you go. <laughs> uh, so it's some Spare Glimmer Hot Foil System. Um, we've gone for the aluminium. Or is that just because it's aluminium? I know, it's just because it's aluminium. Does it have a particular colour? It's like all on water, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, it doesn't actually give me a colour reference. I'll see if I can find it for you. I think I it's just it. glimmer, because it's glimmer foil. I think the others are actually called something else. No. Glimmer's the name of the system. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Anyway, it's a nice silver, shiny. Holographic. Holographic sort of colour, which is very funky. So here we have our design from yesterday, and I'm going to put that onto my mat. Let's see if I remember how to do this. So I've moved that in just in from the edge so I can easily see it. Prism. 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 There you go. So I'm going to load my mat. First time. Good mat. Retrieve data. Well, he popped me on to close camp, please. There you go. Mm, pokey stick in front of you. You're going to use your pokey stick, are you? Well, I don't know where the other one is. No, that'll do. So, Natalie saved it to the USB, so we're going to pull it off the USB. Go down, foiled label, um, that doesn't look right. It doesn't, does it? That's interesting. Okay, how to fix it. So, if for some reason your FCM isn't working... Do you want to go back to you? No, it's okay. You can talk through it. Do you want to just give me the USB? I'll pop it into the same folder. Back to overhead, so you're not just looking at a screen. Maybe you can pop it onto display. Onto display. There we go. So, okay. we see. so if it is misbehaving, sometimes you just have to do things the other way. So I can export, and I'm going to go to SVG. Now, bear in mind, if you do this, when it comes to doing the foiling, you're going to want to just get rid of the extra bits that you just want to cut. So, what I would do is cut first. It means I'm doing it this way round. Yeah? Sure. Mm-hmm. So. And I'm going to pop an SVG at the start of my file name 
so it's easy for him to see which one is the right one and fingers crossed that should be good enough resolution 96 dpi so that'd be perfect hopefully and we go okay and again you want to make sure that you go into finder and just safely remove that USB. And it um may you feel like it. Come on. It's not wanting to eject today. There we go. Okay. So Add a little USB. There we go. Back to you. You turn the mouse off. Hmm? You turn your mouse off. I turn long one, I go. So let's try that again. I'll go back to close cam. There you go. Thank you. So put my USB back in. And USB. Uh, foil card SVG that looks better there we go that looks more like what we'd expect to see okay <laughs> and then going to do a background scan glass of water for you first thing's really good Kelly. I really should do it more often usually it takes a couple to get you up in the morning <laughs> I've got right back on my tea, haven't I? Mm-hmm. It's not quite lined up because I've moved I've taken it off that corner edge. So I'm going to my edit. I'm going to select all of them. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> okay. Object edit. I group it. Group it. Okay. Then move it. Yeah. So you're using that top corner to align your label. No, that's just scroll. There you go. Oh, yeah, oh. I want scroll because I'll be able to see one. Yeah, I would do it like that top corner. Just need to go up a bit. Like that. That's spot on. That there. Go for it, see what you get. Okay, so you want to ungroup it. So that just that cut line is going to actually cut. You can also get rid of the registration mark if you want. Yes, so I get rid of that one as well. Okay. And, oh, oh. Sorry, hold it in my hand. <sighs> there <we go>. Okay. Are <laughs> <laughs> you still going down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because this is final, we're also going to do it on a half cut because it's like a sticker sheet. So press on the top. Oh, there it is, I've lost it. Mm, leave it on auto. Do you want a weeding box on it? No, no. There's a reason why I say that. If you are doing a printable sheet, like Ian is at the moment, if you don't fill the whole thing, if you make sure that you don't add a weeding box, you can actually use it to reprint. Just make sure that you put your whole edge, so in other words, in this case, the bottom edge of that piece of paper, feeding inwards to your printer. 
Apologies for the occasional camera shake. That's me just tapping it <laughs> again because it's yeah, a right awkward. No, it's just where it is. It's awkward, <laughs> and it's going to take one minute apparently. I've put pressure on auto. Yeah. That'd be all right, would it? Yeah, we'll see. Speed of nine. Yeah. Yeah, well, it you can slow that down a bit actually. That's because we were doing um, big mandalas, wasn't it? So Let's bring it down to uh, three. Yeah. It can take two minutes. Yeah, that's alright. See how it goes. So one of the questions on the group um, is about QR codes and how can we use those with a scan and cut as most videos seem to focus on using them with the Cricut. So that is probably going to be our next video. So I'll be doing that with Inkscape. So certainly going through the different computer programmers <laughs> programs at the minute. So that will probably be Tuesday. Tuesday. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. See how you feel. Yeah. Because you have to do that on your own. Yeah. It's another computer one though, isn't it? I can manage the computer when it's the twisting over to do the scan I cut. I can't do it at the moment. So I don't see Ian's doing that but I may have a rejig on my desk now that the um, Gemini's not going back on there. Is it not? You're leaving it over there, right? Mm. I quite like it over there. When you got some was, space. Yeah, then I was thinking that, you know, we'd put the CN on that side along with the other cricket. Mm. That doesn't look half bad. Uh, do you want me to go overhead so that you can move the camera or? Um, can do. Okay. You got it on the right screen so we can see where it's heading. Yep, there you go. I can't help that, I'm trying to get it so it doesn't get the... There we go. It's on a bit so of a weird angle. you can just see that cut line, especially around the bottom edge. And down here we can see it's cut nicely. It looks like it has. Yeah. So, so I can't test it because I don't want to move it. No. So the next thing to do is to just do... Actually, you do want to test it before you do your foiling, actually. Just gently lift up a corner in and just get your hand underneath and see if it will pop up off that backing. You want to laugh? <laughs> Hi. It's the top corner. <sighs> so we're nearly there, Carol. Nearly there. No, like the whole sheet, Ian. Yes, I am. But it's half cut, isn't it? So you want no, to see. the whole sheet. Yes, it has cut. Yeah, okay. I actually meant the whole, whole sheet. Yes, but I don't want to move it, do I? Because I've got to do my next bit. No, but if you. If, as long as you lift that top corner gently and your mat is good, then it shouldn't move. That's what I did. I got the vinyl and I pulled up the vinyl. No, as in the whole sheet. Because if you pull the vinyl and it hasn't cut, you risk tearing it. Hmm. It's quite easy to move actually, it's quite um I was gonna say it looks it looks quite good. Yeah. So you can see it's the first sheet we've done this with this one. Right. Okay. So Put do you want me to go there. back to close scan for you now? So you yeah, for a minute, because I'm gonna do another background scan, aren't I? Because I've got to bring it back in and mm, now you should be able to go okay. Well no, because we deleted the text bit now, didn't we? Yeah, go okay. I'm gonna talk you through it. Go back. So you've still got your scan, mm -hmm. move your cut line for your label out of the way, so just down to the bottom right or something, but don't delete it. That's a really important bit, don't delete it. You're going to go to add, retrieve data, USB, down to your folder, SVG, OK. And again, we're going to get rid of that button cut line first. So I can delete that one now. Yeah. So edit. 
in. Okay, select all. Okay, group it, move it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you're going to position this back on that cross again, like so. You've got that pretty spot on there. Yeah? Now, the smaller your detail, the harder it is going to be to line it up. So, try and give yourself a little bit of leeway. So, the foil that Ian is using has a slight transparency to it. So, Ian's just deleted that registration mark, so we don't accidentally foil it and mark up the uh, fold quilt. Then we can set it to draw. Do you need to set it to fill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go back. So if ever you're not sure, just go back into object edit. Into fill, turn it on. Fill pattern, because I've been playing with patterns. Oh, just double messing check. With it. Just double check. Yeah, you see that? So if any of you haven't seen my blog post on using patterns on your scan and cut, that's over on the Creative Fabrica blog, which is the artistry. And it's a really good good project to go and take a look at. So I talk about how to use patterns to actually create effects in our projects. Do you want to just go back to overhead a minute while I apply tape and okay. foil? There you go. So I'm going to put my foil... Do you want to just move your camera? I've already put my foil quill in. Okay. Apologies for the black thing, but I can't help that. That's the standard. Uh, you can't really see it anyway. It's only a little bit, just not. Okay. Is there a bit of foil, some washi tape just to hold it in place? Am I okay to use that one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check before I give them. They all need it enough anyway, so. The top first. If you have your full quill mat, you could be using that instead at this point with your magnets. Given that you've had to do the repositioning for that full section anyway. So you want to make sure your foil is nice and taut, so that way you get a better better impression. And this foil quill has been on warm since we started the video, so it's been on for a good 25 minutes, so it should be nice and warm. Like me. Nice. <laughs> so just putting foil right some around the edges there. And we're going to go start. You can really see the stunning colours in that foil there. It's like rainbow. Are you on the thing you want still? Close up, yeah. Can I swap to. Oh, that's not close up, that's the, yeah. That's the one you need to be on. Yeah. Yeah. While that's falling, do you have any questions at all or any issues that you are currently experiencing with your scanning cut? Um, especially if you've got any technical issues, computer issues, today is a good day to ask because I have IT in the, in the room with me for a change. <laughs> You seen YouTube comments and stuff? Um, no, I'm only seeing Facebook comments. Look at my 
country stream at the to anybody on YouTube. So. <laughs> yeah, so if you're watching on YouTube and I'm not answering your question, I do apologise for whatever reason it's not coming through to us or today. So what I will do is I will go back and check. Did you show the, 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 the stuff on stream yesterday? Um, is it on stream? The sheet. No, you didn't. You didn't. And um, Louis says, can I talk about Affinity versus Inkscape? Okay, I can show you Inkscape because I have that open in the background. There we go. So, Inkscape is really, really powerful. You can trace in Inkscape, which you can't do in Affinity. There's a few other bits and pieces like warping that you can't do in Affinity at the moment. There's a very big at the moment there. Um, so Affinity is always being constantly updated and beated. So it's growing pretty fast for a, for a software title. But if you're confident with your IT skills, then Inkscape may be the better option for you. Um, by confident, I mean that you're used to using design software, um, you know what all the buttons do, <laughs> then you'll probably find that you feel pretty at home in Inkscape. Now, what I will say is, to me, it doesn't feel like a kind of intuitive user interface, and certainly for beginners, it does seem very daunting. Whereas Affinity Designer is much more user friendly, um, the buttons look a lot more polished and a bit more obvious as to what they do in most cases. Um, Affinity can also go beyond what Inkscape can do in terms of pixel based art. So let's say you create a sticker template and you want to create your own designs on that template. You don't have to stick to just vectors in Affinity Designer. You can either import images or you can actually paint directly into the document itself. So it is horses for courses. So if you really want to get into sticker design, I would say Affinity is probably the better one because you can do things like your watercolor effects, you can do um, textures, you can do lots of fabulous gradients. Okay. Whereas Inkscape is very much focused on the vector side of design. So that is everything that your scan and cut likes in terms of using paths and nodes, dare I say it. <laughs> so if it's just going to be purely vector work, then you can look at Inkscape. There we go. So are you ready in? If I flip yeah. back to you. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Cool. Pass the mic. Pass the mic today. <laughs> Pass the parcel. Well, it's not the microphone. So, let's pop that back there a second. Uh, morning, Sally Ann. Morning. Morning. Come on, let's shoot to the side there, doesn't it? There's a text. Yeah. Um, okay, so as we can see, it's foiled what looks like beautifully on there. I want to check to see if it's actually foiled onto my vinyl. So, hopefully, without moving it, because if it hasn't, I need to do it again. Oh, this is more interesting. Yeah, proofs in the final. Huh? Might have been one occasion where you bet the last of it. Never mind. It has, so I can unload that and I can do your reveal on the uh, on the overhead camera and take it away out there so I can move that out of the way. Take, take the foil out. out. That's the important bit, so bear in mind it's still hot. Oh, plug it. Yeah. 
Ah, one of my plug and hang it somewhere to cool. Yeah, I tend to use my light, I'll be honest. It's better. If you have the right. floor quilt adapter set from Carl, the little cable tidy in that you can mount on the side of your desk and use that. Close that. So, let's get the rest of this up. If you do see any bubbles up here, where you've had to pull it off to get the vinyl off, get the bubbles out. Just feed those to the side so they come out of you. So and then I can unload it off the mat. Right, oh, I've got didn't work very well. Half and half. So you just need to adjust that cutting depth a little bit. Yeah. So there we can see we have the foiling on the top. If you can see the shimmer on that or not, because the light's not really catching it. There you go. You can see the shimmer on that. So you still got a little bit of that gold from the print showing through. But you've got that shimmer Gorgeous on top. Gorgeous shimmer on top. So you can get other foils that have a similar effect. So if it's translucent, then you can do things like a texture on the printed item and then fall over the top of that. You can also get transparent gloss and matte foils. So if that's something that you would be interested in to add a touch of gloss or touch of matte onto a glossy cardstock or vinyl, then please let us know and we can have a look at the cost for those. Yeah, and for people who are interested, this is the vinyl sticker paper that we've bought. Uh, we got it from Amazon. Yeah. Was it expensive? Because I can't remember. No, it wasn't. No. It was about £16, I think. Yeah, I was going to say it was in about £15, £16. Pound. There's 40 sheets in there. So imagine what you can actually do with 40 sheets of that and if you have. And for those of you that are into your planners, the matte white has a texture like paper, so you could still write onto it with relative ease. Um, and like it says, this one's also suitable for inkjet as well, so you don't have to have a laser printer to do this technique at all. Okay. Are you going to do the transfer later so you show sticking it onto your tub? Yes. Yes, I'll do that next week. Okay. Because I have a, a little trick to help out. Okay. Right, and that's, that's us done then. That's us done. So, cool, blimey, that was a quick one for us, wasn't it? <laughs> not bad, 35. Mm. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so if there aren't any further questions, we'll call it a day at that. And if you do have any other questions about Affinity or Inkscape, or just anything. drop me a message. Or anything else. Or anything else. So, I, I do tend to flip about, don't I, in and out at the moment, Facebook as yeah. well. So, take care, and I will hopefully, 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 see you Tuesday. Yeah. Whether that be Tuesday morning or Tuesday evening, depends to be seen. We can do Tuesday morning, because... Mm. We could go early Tuesday morning. Okay. We'll decide. Yeah. Yeah, we'll decide. <laughs> okay. So 
take care, keep an eye out for announcements in terms of the Typhus Tuesday stream and don't forget to have a go at the challenge. So it's a final challenge and there's lots more details on the group. The group is scanning cut and paper craft courses, classes and workshops by Planner Craft. And please do answer all three questions when attempting to join. Thank you. <laughs> and you're welcome, Linda. Um, Sally, officially we've we've kind of had our weekend yesterday and today, haven't we? It's a yeah, bit of a funny one. I'm working tomorrow, aren't I? So. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's a really odd one with yeah, shifts. So I will be working tomorrow. Ish. Ish. Yeah. I'll be working, I'm probably FaceTime Mum at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so take care, have a good weekend, get that wine out and have a play. So you don't have to have anything expensive to put it onto. Um, recycled coffee jars are a great way to start. For starters, most of them have a kind of flattish side, so it stays put while you're putting it on. So it's a good, good sort of first attempt of vinyl onto glass. So take care and bye. Bye.